Hello and welcome to Reaction Shots for January 2022. It's our 2021 Year in Review episode 2021. Saw nothing. Yeah, we're, up top. Up top. Up top. Saw nothing. COVID, it's the end of the world. Saw a lot of TV though. A lot of blind spots. Yep. I, I missed a lot of stuff. I uh, played games I have a, and watched TV. I have a list of movies that I wanted to see and did not get to see yet. Um, those include Lost Daughter, The Innocence, King's Man, The Power of the Dog, Licorice Pizza, Tick, Tick, Boom, Resident Evil, Macbeth, Last Night in Soho, Parallel Mothers, Spencer, No Sudden Move, Prisoners of Ghostland, The Velvet Underground, and Night Teeth. <gasps> That's a lot. <sighs> yeah, so I missed all those. I saw a bunch of other ones. I saw Titane. I saw Green Knight. I saw nice. I Care a Lot. I saw, you know, but... I, I saw the worst person in the world. I saw Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley. I saw that. How was I it? I saw it. I liked it. Nice. I mean, it's not like amazing or anything, but I liked sure. it. Sure. Uh, well, yeah. Let's before we get into El Topic, let's just talk about anything you've seen lately. What have you seen lately, Hubie? Uh, it's just a little movie called Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> on, uh, uh, we did a spoiler mode on that. You can check out uh, that spoiler mode on uh, Patreon for one dollar. Yep. Any patron. Check yep. it out. One dollar will net you that spoiler mode where Isla, Ben, and myself talk about it. Yeah. So no reason to talk about it here. You got to pay for that. You got to pay for the <laughs> privilege. <laughs> pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> hated it. Find out why. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I loved it. Yeah, um, for sure. Loved yeah, it. It was really good. <clears throat> um, started watching because I've been wanting to watch it for so long and finally enough was enough. Yellowstone. Oh, okay, the show. Yeah. A lot of billboards for that, or like a Yellowstone spinoff so all like, over LA. Yeah, that's like the main where I was the main reason where I was like, all right, now is the time because <clears throat> they're doing a 1883 spinoff, so it's like just a western. Right. Uh, it's Taylor Sheridan, Hell or High Water, Sicario, Wind River. It's the best. Yeah. So I like, I like those. Wait, is Yellowstone modern? And yep, like modern times. Super Kevin, prequel. Oh, yep, okay. Kevin Costner, leading. Sure. Four seasons. The four, the season four finale was the highest watched cable show since like the peak of Walking Dead. Whoa! It was out of nowhere. It was I huge. Guess people be watching. It's like they eleven like million people or something for the finale. So I've been binging the hell out of that show. Like there is no tomorrow. It's amazing. I love it. That's pretty much it. Okay. Which and then other shit. Witcher and. Yeah, Hawkeye was Hawkeye. cool. I liked Hawkeye. Cobra um, Kai, we also did spoiler mode. You can check that out. Check that out. Sophia started watching Cobra Kai. She likes it. Nice. Uh, I've been uh, watching Succession, which I had never seen. Nice. Sophia really likes it. I'm like, it's a weird show for me. Like, I'm in season three now. Mm hmm. Like, I hate it, and I like it. Like, okay. I, I hate it. I don't enjoy watching it, but I don't ever stop thinking about it. Like, nice. I can't stop thinking about the show. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to just being done watching it. Nice. <laughs> but I like it, and I don't like it. It's very weird. Because, like, weird. there's nothing there's nothing to, like, grasp onto in Succession. Like, yeah. I hate every character. Like, I literally, like, any any main character... Could get hit by a bus, and yeah. I'd go, good. Yeah. The fandom of that show is pretty intense. Yeah, it's of a weird Of just like, show. oh, I, I guess I need to watch Succession because everyone is screaming at people to watch it. Well, that that was part of it. I got, <laughs> yeah. I got annoyed into watching it. I, 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 I'm like, that's the quickest way for me to not ever yeah. want to watch something when bullied, people are dude. screaming and like... I mean, it's good. But... ...pissed at you for not watching something. Like, oh. Yeah. That and Ted Lasso. Yeah, I haven't gotten same onto fand that train Same yet. fandoms. I don't think it's the same fandoms. Because <laughs> Ted Lasso, if I understand correctly, is about like positivity and good people. Succession yeah. is about the worst people who ever lived. <laughs> um, I also saw, speaking of which, the worst person in the world I just saw. I'll talk about it more in a minute, but I really like that one. I saw Don't Look Up. I thought it was fun. I don't know. Nice. Kind of depressing, but didn't make me mad or anything. Well, nice. I saw Matrix Four, Ghostbusters yep. Afterlife, yep. Nightmare Alley, Nowhere In, which is the Saint Vincent movie, which was really weird and not 
not great. What is Saint Vincent? She's a musician. Oh, nice. It's like a fake documentary. Nice, like uh, that uh, Joaquin Phoenix one they did, like that yeah. style. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, this one gets really surreal. It gets really bizarre. Sure. I screwed up my hair now. Looks nice. Thanks. I got a lot caught on the... I got so much hair. Okay. I like having Wrong. a lot of hair, though. All right. Um, yeah, so I guess now we're going to talk about the year in review. I guess let's just talk about our favorites, or should we let's save do it. that? Let's dive right. in. What's your favorites? We did five and five. Five. Should we, should I we think each, I might have six. We, should we each start at our bottoms and, and ping pong each other? Okay, for movies? Yeah, we'll do movies first. I have six, so okay. I'll go first. Cool. Um, my s- number six slot. Um, this is a weird list. <laughs> we didn't really see weird. shit. We didn't see shit. We didn't my, see uh, shit. Well, I've got some honorable mentions. I'll throw those <laughs> in at the end, I guess. Um, my number six slot, Fear Street Trilogy. Fuck yeah, that's on my I'm list. I'm counting it as a movie and Damn. all movies as one movie, I guess. <laughs> if I needed to really hone it down, though, it's 78. 1978, that was my favorite one. I liked the third one a lot and the second one a lot. Nice. Yeah, the first one's my least favorite, but the third is probably my favorite. Nice. Um, okay, that was my number six. What's your number five? My number five is the Demon Slayer movie. Oh. Train. It was so sick. The anime one? The anime movie. It is so good. Um, yo, it is one of the highest like grossing movies of the year. How much did this movie make? An anime movie. <laughs> I need the I mean, box not, office. This is this is the year to try it. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this startling number? Okay, go. For this anime film? Is this domestic or worldwide? This is the worldwide okay. take. Four hundred and sixty million. Wow. For an anime movie. That's good. Super good. Um, yeah, I loved it. It had really cool action and just a cool setup. I love train anything, whether it's a train heist or a train robbery or a train murder. You do love trains. Yeah, if something's going down on a train, I'll be there. Do you have to have caught up? It's based on a show, right? Yeah, so the De- so Demon Slayer, they did season one. And what was really cool is the movie is its own arc okay. in, be- in between the seasons. So season one, oh. movie, season two. Okay. And season two cool. is currently on right now, airing. Okay. My number five, Spider-Man No Way Home. Nice. I, uh... Really liked it. I was okay. shocked. Nice. I, I really enjoyed it. I also feel like I forgot some, but I looked through a list of every movie of the year. Nice. Whatever. So that's my number five. Spider-Man. You can check out all Eyeless Thoughts on Spider-Man on the Patreon spoiler mode. Check out our spoiler mode. <laughs> my number yeah. four. Patreon.com slash Easy Eyes. Spider-Man, not on my list. Wow. But my number four is Marvel related, and that's Black Widow. Oh, that's an honorable mention. I made that. That's an honorable mention. I love this movie. I haven't cared about a singular Marvel movie the way I cared about this one in so, so long. Mm -hmm. It people's main complaint was that it like didn't connect enough. And that's probably why so much now it now it connects even more. But even at the time, that was a, a complaint. And that's part of the reason I loved it so much was I thought it had the most the highest personal and emotional stakes out of yeah. any MCU movie. Yeah, for sure. I just love it that. Felt, and it felt, yeah, it, it had a lot of heart and it mm-hmm. felt like its own little thing. Yeah. Which I think the MCU could do with more of that. Yes, like, yes, please. Yeah. Loved it. My number four? Ooh, excuse me. It's been a long day. My number four is Dune. Number four. Yeah, number four got okay. beat out by three other movies. Dang. Um, probably largely because it's just the first half. Like yeah, it's not even it's, fair. it's not even a movie. Like You're it's right. it's just half a movie. You're right. Um, but it was great. I uh, <clears throat> you know I love Denis Villeneuve. Mm-hmm. So yeah, nice. That that's mine. I love the look and feel of it, and like that's a tough book to film. Like I've read the book. Mm-hmm. It's a tough one. Tall to, order. To make interesting and get all the details in there. 
And I think they did a good job of it. Nice. And I think that it's only going to get stronger once the whole the whole package is there. Yeah. Make like seven of them. <laughs> I mean, they just could. Be, there's have like, it be the next Avatar. There's like six books yeah. and like some extra books on top of the six books. Oh, it's like, so much. Yeah. I only have read the first one. Nice. My number Let's, three, Fear Street. Yo. Fear Street. Fear mm-hmm. Street was so good. Obsessed with Fear Street. I want more Fear Street. Fear Street, dude. Just... This is it. It's the best. So fun when that came out. It was so modern and also like so nostalgic at the same time. Yeah. It's such a clear vision. You know, and like, so much heart. We always talk about heart now, like as things are so produced and manufactured in today's day and age. Yeah. Heart is what is setting properties apart in my mind. And this had it all the way. And it had like a surprising depth and like. Yeah. It's about something like who who would have expected like a queer relationship to be like the linchpin of, yeah. of everything, you know, like it's so good. It's oh, so man. Good. Yeah. My number three is pig. Nice. That's my uh, number two. So there we go. Again. OK, we, we can just talk about up. we can just talk about pig. pig. It's so good. It's so well executed and acted and mm-hmm. written and subtle and mm-hmm. it like it's like tense but also it honors you for like i don't know it's such a good movie yeah it's it shocking cage. came out of nowhere nick cage you know we, he has multiple modes this man he can be a meme a caricature yep. a character He's a genius or he's paying off his castle. Yeah. Like that's that's what it is. I mean, this is definitely one of his all-time best. Oh, for no sure. No doubt. Up there, up there for real with his all-time best, yeah, I think. Yeah, for like, real. Really good. Like, everything about this movie going in, Isla, I thought it was a joke because it... Yeah. You cast him in it, too, and it it's like, oh, Nick Cage, like pissed because they took his pig what the yeah, hell you're like you're like, like from the trailer you're like this what is, is a this? joke like, john it's like yeah. john wick like nicholas cage john wick about a pig but he's also a michelin chef who yeah. lives in the woods like what is this movie so weird and it's yeah. just such a good character study it's so well done it has one of my favorite scenes it has my favorite scene of the year i won't give it away but there's a conversation in this movie just, yeah, oh yeah I we've know talked this about movie. it yeah you and yeah. i talked about it it's there's really like, really really good yeah um well that that's the thing like movie. like not really a spoiler mild spoiler like he what he does he does with emotions and words what john wick does with bullets <laughs> yeah and it's and it's so good <laughs> like <laughs> oh man Love just like eviscerate him. somebody with talking it's it's Ooh. amazing I I am mad at myself. I have no idea who wrote or directed Pig. Debut. Debut director. Okay. I'm ready for whatever. Literally out of nowhere. Whatever this person does next. I believe it's a debut. Yeah. Yeah. They have a couple shorts and a a TV credit and that's it. Crazy. Um, My. So I guess we're on my number two now because your number two is Pig. Mm -hmm. My number two. Um. This one was recommended to me, and I got my hands on a screener. Um, just came out, I think, recent Norwegian movie. Uh, it's called The Worst Person in the World, <laughs> and it is so good. Sounds dark. Sounds like a um, dark comedy. Um, it's got a very dark comedy title. It's it's comedic, but it's also like just so heartfelt and sincere. Um, it's by the person who made Thelma which was like a lesbian brain powers, like epilepsy movie. Whoa. <laughs> like, so if you had to leave the theater when we went to see it a hundred years ago, cause the flashing was starting to like Whoa. bother her. Whoa. So actually because of her, the sunset five or whatever, put up signs for that movie. We had to like have them put up Jeez. signs. Cause we were like, yo, you shouldn't find out this has like epilepsy triggering stuff in the movie. Yeah. Like once you're already in there, but anyway, this movie doesn't have any of that, but it's, um, it's just really, really good. And probably one of my best, my favorite performances. I think she won at Cannes, actually. But nice. Cannes. Con. Con. But, um, con, con. 
Yeah, the main uh, Ka- woman in Ka- this is just Ka- fantastic. Can Ka- 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 Film Festival? Yeah, definitely it's not that. <laughs> But yeah, the worst person in the world. Check it out. It's phenomenal. yeah. I never even heard of this one. No. Yeah, yeah. I think it's hit in the states. Maybe hurt sometime. Soon. I don't Sick. know. What's oh. your number? What's your number one, baby? Number girl? one is Dune. Yeah, it's I figured. Dune. I figured. So good. I know it's just half a movie. I know, but I um, mean it's. It's what a half. What a half. What a what a half. <laughs> just, I, I I got to see it in the IMAX. Definitely helps any movie, you know, definitely raises the experience because it is. I mean, this movie, these are the types of movies that were there were made for the IMAX. Oh, yeah. And out of all the movies I saw, you know, this was the one that was the most magical in the moment and weeks after it was over. Like Spider-Man, I'm I'm surprised. I the reason it wasn't on my list was cuz even just a few days after I saw it, it was kind of like, okay. Cool. Yeah. Like they did the thing and and it was great. You know? That yeah. sounds harsh, but uh still loved it. But yeah. Dune, I just kept I wanted to go back. I kept thinking about it. Um, yeah. I, yes. I definitely wouldn't mind seeing it again. I'm kind of yeah. bummed it's not on HBO anymore. Famously when it was over, Famously, <laughs> that's the wrong word. Famously, everybody knows about Famously, whatever you're about to everyone say. Everyone knows. <laughs> no, when it was over, the um, almost immediately I turned to Beth and I was like, "I was like, it's over." <laughs> I was like, "I thought we had like two more hours." Yeah. Like, what? I've Which is ne- crazy because it's three hours long. Yes, I've. <laughs> it, it was. It was so. I, I mean, just the movie started and the movie ended, and not even for a millisecond was my mind anywhere else. Yeah, just just blew me away. Yeah, blew I, me away. I. I remember like having to go to the bathroom halfway through, and I just never did because yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't leave. I can't yeah. get up. This is amazing. <laughs> Gripping. Like, ridiculous movie yeah. um i need more denny villeneuve has such a weird quality his movies are so ethereal where it's like ah, they have this bizarre ephemeral quality where like things are happening obviously everything seems to be like but like it i don't know everything's you feel, heightened everything's like, heightened but like but also not like you feel the plot in other people's movies whereas in his movies like Things just kind of unravel. It's like yeah. a mist. It's like a fog of story just coming at you. Yes. And it's such an incredible... Like, David Fincher kind of has that, too. Totally, yeah. Good but call. Fincher is, like, more mechanical. Mm-hmm. This is, like, natural. His yes. movies have, like, a weird kind of natural quality to them. Totally. I don't know. And the I'm lighting just, is always bonkers. I'm just bummed I didn't see Guillermo's because him and, him and him are my two favorites, you know? And they both I'm, had a movie this year, which is just so... Yeah. So cool. I'm very curious what you'll mm-hmm. think of Nightmare Alley. Like, I kind of want to talk to you about it. There's a theater by my house. Yesterday, I was looking at the showtimes, and there zero people had were seeing it. Yeah. So I might just I, sneak I in. Yeah, I might just sneak into one sit in the back corner and just have There's no one in there. I think it's worth it, dude. Get yeah. it. Get an N95. Yeah. Because everything else is pointless. Exactly. And go see Nightmare Alley. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then tell me, because I want to talk to you about it. Hell yeah. Uh, my number one Number is, one. Can you guess what it is? Titan. Titan. Titan A? No, that's in my... That's an honorable mention. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Halloween Kills, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. No, I haven't even seen that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. French Dispatch. Oh, I forgot I, about uh, this movie. It is. I was just talking about it with Elise <laughs> yesterday. Nice. Um... The most like pure, distilled, holy shit, undistilled, whatever Wes Anderson yeah. movie that he's ever made. Like it is insane, and it I don't know. And least I do, my goodness. Yeah, but um, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I I thought it was really cute and Jolly. fun. Yeah, it is. It's it's just like a fun, weird movie. Yeah, and like hasn't really. Yeah, For no, my opinion, know. hasn't lost a step. I mean, the last one I saw was um, Darjeeling. What was after that? Darjeeling Limited? Yeah, what was after, after that? After that? Jeez. Um, the hotel few. one. The hotel one. Yeah, Grand Budapest. Grand Hotel. Bu- that after one. That. That's, what I, that's the one I'm thinking oh, of. Oh, I love that. That yeah, one's incredible. probably still my favorite. That one's probably one of my favorites. That and Royal and yeah. Life, Life Aquatic. 
Those Crushing are probably it. my Still. three. But wow, French so Wes Anderson up there. Soderbergh had a movie this year. P.T. Anderson, holy shit! A lot of people. What was Soderbergh? Steven Spielberg? No sudden Un- move. Undying or whatever. Oh, so no sudden move. Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen that one. It was good. Wow. Spielberg, West Side Story. So many directors came out this year, and I haven't West seen West Side shit. Story, dude, got had got like nobody went inside. Like, no, like nobody went. Inside. It's like, hey, I don't think anyone cares. And also, Ridley just Scott, like Last Duel, it looks amazing, but oh like God. nobody saw it. Ridley Scott. I I take Don't issue hinge. with him with him being like millennials can't stop yeah. looking at their phones. It's like no bitch, we just don't yeah. care about your dumbass no. movie with bad haircuts and a pandemic. No, like, I really wish I could sit down and have this discussion with Ridley Scott it, because I would say HBO. I would say Ridley, you're so out of touch. It has nothing to do with millennials. It has to or do phones. everything with your shitty ass movie theater experiences. People like him and Spielberg and Scorsese, these big ass directors need to take it into their own hands and partner with the movie studio or mi- yeah. with the movie theaters to bring that experience back to what it should be. Sorry that we can't watch it in our private movie theater, Ridley Scott. Have to watch it in some shit place. It's not just millennials on their phones. It's because going well, it's to the, the theater sucks. It's the global pandemic also. Like, and the that, theaters are all going out of business. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Alamo is the only good ex- theater experience anymore. People actually behave in there because yeah. they'll throw you out if you don't. That needs to be the next step is like movie studios need to partner with movie theaters or something. So we're going back to before the uh, Paramount decree or whatever, like 1948. I guess. Where they, they have, they're, we're un, we're unsplitting up their, their, um, is it sketchy? I mean, you like know, monopoly and, stuff, right? Yeah, they had monopoly. That's yeah, what the Paramount yeah. decree. They split up everything. They had to. They had to choose to get rid of, because they owned production, distribution, and so uh, showcasing or whatever. And yeah. like they had to, they had to decide which of those three to get rid of, and they all got yeah. rid of theaters. Shit. So, basically, there's a lot more to it. But Paramount decree. Look into it. It's interesting. <laughs> it's Super crazy interesting. stuff, dude. Um. All right. Real quick, let's do the same thing for TV shows. One, two, for- three, four, five, six. Yeah, I have six again. Oh, okay. Well, then you um, go. All right. My number six was Nine Perfect Strangers. I thought it was cute. I've never read the book. I don't know. I thought it was cool. It sounds like a horror movie. It's not. It's okay. about... It's, it's kind of a cult thing. I don't... Sort of. Love cult shit. Got great performances. A lot of act, good actors in it. Nice. It was, it was cool. Number five, The Witcher. Season two. Okay. Really liked it. Season one was uh, like anthology style, kind of like self-contained storylines, basically, for the uh, most part. This one is more traditional. Okay. And really liked it. Yeah. Um, my number five is Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Shocked. Shocked. I liked it. Hawkeye. I really loved it. I, am I, I allowed, am I allowed to... Heart. Am I allowed to spoil the ending of this show? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just want to say that I really liked the show until the last little bit when when they just like are like, huh, guess what? There's no stakes. Like there's a fight scene in this that is just so ludicrous. And our heroes you, you come mean away. That she wouldn't get like our heroes vaporized. Our heroes like come away completely unscathed. Like there's yeah, yeah. no reason to even care about anything. But I mean, like you ever again anymore. It's absurd. Well, but, but I mean, that's kind of a joke to me. Of Hawkeye <laughs> is like he's a dude with a stick and a string, not getting pulverized. But they every wanna, two seconds. They want to have their cake and eat it too, where they have like these hard hitting. People are talking high stakes, and then they're like, when push comes to shove in the fight scenes, it's like slapstick comedy. Like, I just... (laughs) People are trying to kill each other for, like, these gnarly traumatic reasons, and then they're just quipping. Yeah. The finale, Isla, really bothered me of that show. It's called... It's called... It's called a de- it's called a defense mechanism using humor... Sure. ...to mask your pain. Sure, 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 sure. I like that. That's a good take. I don't that. know. I just thought it was cute. I yeah. thought uh, maybe yeah. maybe I put it on here because I thought I would hate it so much. Yeah. No, but I, I just it, I, I, like, oh, it's cute. I loved it till just that end, the end there, the finale. Yeah. The we'll Marvel finales, they got to work on those. Yeah, they got to. Yeah. Number four for what? me is Bosch. <laughs> it's one of the most. Is that on TV currently? The final season was 2021. Okay. 
series finale the show ended there's a spin-off coming this year already uh okay. i love the way this show portrays los angeles uh, I love the way this sh- show portrays police officers, especially in today's age. Um, they're not glossy good people all the time. And the show goes into real issues with police. Uh, I'm surprised it, to hear that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously it could be doing more. It could have been doing better. It, it, you know, when the show started, it like started back in like 2012 as okay. the seasons go on, it gets it gets more and more of that. Um, but by the end of it, by God, I just really love that show. Super good. Somehow, nice. somehow, like insanely dark and and complex and character focused, but just going down so easy. Like the easiest, hardest watch at the same time. It's weird, weird vibe. Nice. Yeah. Um, my next one is White Lotus. Did you watch that one? So it's Connie Britton? Um, yes. Dude, I wanted to watch this, but I did not. HBO, it had uh, Jennifer Coolidge in it. A nice. bunch of people. Um, yeah, this one I really liked. It's uh, funny and kind of intense and a good commentary. It's, it's really good. Nice. White Lotus. I, my parents watched it and loved it. Yeah, it's cute. Number three, Midnight Mass. 10 out of 10. Uh, 10 out of 10. Yeah. 10 out of 10. That's it. 10 out of 10. It's it's so good. God. Like. God. <laughs> once you once you put like once you get it's it's definitely one of those things where it's like you get your headspace into the style. Yep. Of their show. And then you're like, oh, this is great. I love I love these Mike Flanagan stuff like flawless haunting three in a row. This. Yeah. Three in a row. Just. I mean, Blind Man is probably still my favorite, but same. But apparently, his next one is going to be kid focused. House of Usher. Yeah, I think so. Everyone There's like a, a kids one coming. I remember that story. Oh, cool. If that's what like he's doing four next. Four kids, or it's there are kid, there like are kids. Kids are the main character. characters. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Cool. So, I feel like I read Fall of the House of Usher when I was like a teen, but I have literally no memory of it. It's a Poe, you said. I think so. Nice. If it's yeah. Um, my number three is WandaVision. I loved it. I thought it did interesting things and like, yeah, it had, it had the problems that MCU has, but I, I thought that it had an emotional ending. Um, and I really liked it. Like it, it felt satisfactory where I thought Loki didn't totally, um, it felt like, yeah, it buttoned itself up. I, Uh, it was a hell of a ride. Yeah. Unlike any show I've ever watched because it was the first, you know? Yeah. Week to week, that was just insanity. That was one of and the most you, insane runs of a of a limited series I've ever... Yeah, the zeitgeist. The, the, yeah, wow. And it felt good to have something, like, in that period of time, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we were mm-hmm. still, like, fully pandemic and, mm-hmm. like, everything was falling apart. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, are you on number one now? Number two. Okay. Oh god, number two, Mare of East Town. <gasps> oh yeah, dude. Oh, oh I forgot god. about Mare of East Town. Oh, oh my god. Shit. I had the... Mare of East Town in mind somewhere yeah. too. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. Like maybe like Kate Winslet's best performance of all time. Like she what the was hell? So good in it. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. So good. Uh, without a doubt, my favorite action scene of the year. Uh, no question. The most realistic and which part? Uh, there's a scene that goes down. I don't really want to talk about it, but it's a it's, okay. uh, it's kind of a gun battle. Um, and I have my memory is so foggy of it. Yeah, and it is the it is like realistic, g- gritty, and high stakes. Like if your thing doesn't have emotional or, or or stakes of any kind, like I'm immediately half as invested as I would be. Yeah. Uh, sure. And Mayor of East Town was was the highest possible stakes. Yeah. And it felt good to have another show where like week to week you're like, 
it harkened questioning back questioning everything yeah, yeah, yeah it harkened fun. back to the magical true, Detec- true detective true season detective one season one yeah totally had that same yeah where like a lot of people are watching this but not everyone is and it is week to week a legitimate 10 out of 10 yeah uh i loved it I yeah loved it. felt special as it was as it was unfolding I think I like that one more than White Lotus or WandaVision. So maybe that's my number three and I have seven. Perfect. Perfect. (laughs) My number two is Midnight Mass, which we talked about just a second ago. Um, What's your number one? God, Midnight Mass. Such good characters. Midnight Mass also like, the characters are all great. Yes. The dialogue is really good. Such good dialogue. It's very stylized. Like, like obviously, yeah, they're going to monologue for six minutes, like whatever. But Uh like, and what the show says and how it says it, I thought it, yep. it was just really good. I love, for one of the first times in my life, I found myself Googling things from the Bible. <laughs> like, tell me about yeah. this. Oh, yeah, tell, me, oh yeah. tell me about this biblical character. What's going well, it's on funny, here? <laughs> it's funny because, like, I was raised religious, you know, and, like, got out of that mindset for myself. and And, like, watching it, I was like, Mike Flanagan grew up religious and then, yeah. and then got out of it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he, he um, did. He did. He said Oh, he I did. know. And I looked yeah. I looked it up later and he That's definitely That's so funny. Did. And it you was like. You just knew. You knew it. I, oh, I could feel it. I was like, I was like, definitely this vibe. But like, what's nice about it is he wasn't unfair. Mm-hmm. I think like he wasn't criticizing religion. Like he's not saying it's yep. bad to have a religion. He's saying it's bad to be a fanatic. Totally. It's bad to be a fundamentalist. Like, and I think that, that that's something that most reasonable people would probably agree about. Mm-hmm. And, and also like the speech that Riley makes about like what, what he thinks people, d- what happens after you die. And like basically oh explains, God, explains that's... atheism like perfectly, yeah. like looking up at the stars and seeing that, like thinking that they're a campfire. Cause when you look over there, you can see a campfire so and sick. you're like, well, those must be campfires too. Like those must be people in the heavens. Like. It's such an elegant way to explain why we invented religion. And I watched that scene three times. Yeah. I loved it it's so much. It's so good, dude. <laughs> so dope. Midnight Mass hype. Midnight Mass, dude. It's not even scary. No. But there's some scary imagery. <laughs> yeah. Really? You know like, who, well, d- who does shadows in the background... And or glowing eyes better oh, yeah. than Mike Flanagan. Loves both of those <laughs> things. Did he do Gerald's <laughs> game or whatever it's yes, called? Yes, yes. Yeah. The dude standing in the corner in that, yeah, dude. terrifying. Get away. Get away, yeah. And like <laughs> X standing in the corner yeah. is like one of the scariest things you can do, in Agreed. my opinion. Agreed. Like, in anything that Agreed. that ever happens in, it's always like... Hereditary, whatever. Yeah, the yeah. scariest part is when she just sees her mom standing in the corner. God. Like that haunts me to this day. Same. And I hate it. It's so scary. <laughs> Pyramid one. head at the end of the at the end of the hallway, dude. I'm Hell yeah. Beautiful. Number one, and it's not even close, and it's one of my favorite things of all time. Cobra Kai. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> it's it's I can't even say enough about it. You can check out our spoiler mode on patreon.com <laughs> slash easy allies. Yes, if you're a patron please. with just for a dollar, you can hear Damiani and I talk about Cobra Kai season four and uh, few things get Michael Damiani as hyped as Cobra Kai. Uh, the man is just giddy in the spoiler yeah. mode. He, so, check I edited it out. that and I, you know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch it through like moment to moment, but yeah. I could tell his energy was, was up. Yeah. He was very into it. Uh, season uh, three, I really liked, but I think season four could be honestly one of the best, if not the best wow. in the show. It's so good. Is season two the worst? Sophia was in season two right now. Two. Uh, she says a lot of people think it goes like too dark or something. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't know. What I mean, they're all, saying. they're all, Excellent. That's all I can say. I don't even want to say one is the worst because they're all excellent. But four just might be the best. Great. This is a show that is impo- like I, I. It was so hard for me not to binge it. I had to force. I had to force the non binge because you right. just you know you wait a year for this thing and it's over in one or two nights. 
Right. So I made it last like four or five nights. I was just like one or two at most each night. That's it. Keep it chill. Yeah. So. Love it. Yeah. Um, my number one surprising only murders in the building. Dude. <laughs> nice. I loved this show. Beth it's so it. she said the same thing. Cute. That's jolly. It's so cute, dude. It's Are they, funny. Is it coming back? Yeah, well, there's a season two. I think they okay. started filming it recently. Yeah, cool. It, cool, uh, cool, cool. I just loved every inch of it. I, yeah. I can't. It's like so cozy. It like feels like, it feels like you've come home. That's cool. And the TV is just on Murder She Wrote, That's and you just so set nice. or like on an Agatha. Your mom's watching an Agatha Christie or something, yeah. and you just I, sit down and watch Poirot do something. And I you just love really it. legitimately like Selena Gomez. I'm like, I love I her. Love Selena Gomez. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, I love Steve Martin and yeah. Martin Short. They're just <laughs> so good together. And like Selena Gomez is the perfect yeah. like match for them. That's it's awesome. such a perfect. I loved it. I nice. loved it. We have a thing because there's so many shows we watch together, but uh-huh. then we we like to watch some things on our own and then rewatch it with each yeah, other. Yeah, so yeah. she's like watching that. She's like, yeah, maybe after like season two or three, then we'll watch it. Oh, <laughs> funny. Yeah. I loved it. Um, Sick. I had a few honorable mentions, movies and shows. Black Widow, I Care A Lot, Green Knight, The Trip, uh, the Norway one from 2021, Titan and Arcane. Nice. I haven't finished Arcane yet. That's why I didn't put it anywhere else. But I liked it so far. I don't nice. know. Those were honorable um, honorables. Honorable mentions. Honorables, yeah, yeah sure. A couple horror uh, honorable mentions I'd like to give a shout out, actually. Of course. Resident Evil, you can check out our spoiler mode for that on patreon.com slash easy allies. You can check out our spoiler mode for one dollar. <laughs> Lock of <laughs> spoiler modes on there. Yeah, um, man. Army of the Dead. Army of Thieves, both of those. I'm into that universe. I'm How did they put in. both of those out in one year? What's crazy? Happening? Yeah. How is that possible? I don't even know. Um, and they're both like three hours long, aren't they? Yeah, they're long. They're odysseys for sure. How, how do you do that sort um, of stuff? And, and my favorite horror movie, not counting uh, Fear Street. Fear Street's kind of its own little thing. But my favorite standalone horror movie was The Night House. I really liked that Ooh, movie. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. I really loved it. Um... Anything, it has my favorite topic and theme of, of a horror movie. I don't want to, if you know me, you'll know that, what that is. But uh, Grief? I will I will say no more about that movie. It's a very good one. Is it Grief? I don't know. And then Halloween Kills. <laughs> just, just wink if it's Grief. <laughs> Halloween, Halloween Kills was like, I'm so torn on this movie. Evil Dies Tonight is the best <laughs> meme of the year. There's no yeah. question. It comes up in the patrons. Yeah. It, it comes up, but someone, maybe not in the way you want. Yeah. And then, I mean, so many good horror movies. Lastly, Come True, uh, this Canadian one, kind of a mind, a mind fuck type movie. Okay. Uh, I think you'd like that one, actually. Okay. Uh, and uh, Guy Ritchie had a cool Statham movie, The Wrath of Man. Little Guy mm-hmm. Ritchie back to his roots. Oh, Armored that car fun. heist. Okay. Armored car heist in Los Angeles. Statham has a mysterious past and and the premise is mysterious past and he comes to be a security guard for this armored truck company. Cool. That's all I'm going to say about that one. What's it called? Wrath of Man. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's Guy Ritchie. I've realized he he is, he's truly one of my favorite directors because at a minimum, I like every single one of his movies that I've seen. I've never seen a Guy Ritchie movie film and been like, oh, I didn't like it. To be fair, I haven't seen Aladdin or King Arthur. I forgot he did Aladdin. Yeah. He I did the live action Aladdin? Yeah. Oh How my weird God. is that? How bizarre. That is I didn't so see weird. It. I know. I didn't see it. I can't judge it. I didn't see it. And then last Why? but not least. Why him? Why question. pick him for that? Last but not least, really want to give a quick, quick lip service to this movie called The Novice. I rented okay. that on uh, Amazon Prime. And uh, just a little indie movie about a girl who wants to win a rowing scholarship at a university she goes to at all costs. Okay. She will do anything it takes to get the scholarship. It's a dark school Sounds like it goes to drama. dark places. Dark school drama. Sick movie. Love it. Favorite thing. Yes. Fun fact. Yes. 
shout out to Megan Kelmo, who went to my high school and was on the U.S. Olympic crew rowing team. Yeah, sick. I wonder if they've seen this movie because this movie goes into I it. I was like, I was like, what is? It? I want to know about this stuff. They're like going over all the lingo. There's like solo. Uh, it's called like a a seat race because okay. you have to do it like multiple times, but like you keep changing the seat because oh. of the weight and it's on the time. It's crazy. I was I was fascinated. Cool movie. I keep yawning. Sorry. Um. Okay. That's our list. We're 42 minutes into this podcast. 2021 now. recap. There it is. Yeah, that's our stuff. But we also have a boatload, a boatload of Patreon, patron comments and lists. And some people just kind of did their own thing. Mm-hmm. And best uh, of the year. This will get them. It's very exciting. They come and, out of the uh, woodwork for best of the year They come out lists. of the woodwork for this yeah. one. So this, we got a lot. So I'm just gonna kind of blast through it just all. Blast, I think blast. But if there's something we want to say, we'll we'll have to say it. Um, but covering I'm just fire, blast. Yeah, I'm gonna lay down a suppressive fire of patron comments. <laughs> if you would like for your patron comments to be included in my suppressive fire in coming episodes, go to patreon.com/slash Easy Allies and be in the seven dollar and up tier. Though that's our film club, and I love you. Most plugs okay. um, in history. So the first, the first question I ask of our beautiful, wonderful patrons uh, in the seven dollar and up tiers at Patreon.com <laughs> uh, was, "What is the best movie of 2021?" I just said best. What is the so best? So does that mean your favorite? Does that mean the best? Who's to say? I feel Tyler like June is the best. If it's not your favorite, it's the best. Well, you can count how come many times me. Dune comes up. Yeah, Co- come at Count me. how many times Dune comes up, and we'll see who Go wins. out into the desert with an IMAX camera and make Dune, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> you need desert power for that sort of thing. <laughs> People can't do it without desert power. Uh, Tyler Travis, number one for Dune. Yeah. Uh, and a surprisingly adored pig. We pig, Dune and did. Pig, the best of both Dune worlds. Dune and Pig, dude. Yes. Dune and Pig. Go together of- like fire and water. <laughs> fire and ice. Pigs of the true <laughs> desert power. Was your Pig was on your list, right? My number two. Number yeah, one, yeah, Dune, yeah, number yeah, two, yeah, Pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah mine are uh, both on there, too. Right next to each other. Andrew's Clanth- Clanthus. I really liked The Suicide Squad and Spider-Man and disliked Shout The out. Matrix and Resident Evil. Val was also a great documentary. Yeah, Suicide Squad, I was surprised at how fun it was. And I actually, like, cared about them, like, yes, the characters. absolutely. Like, King Shark, I was, like, yep. rooting for King Shark the whole time. Two quick shout-outs to the two best kills of 2021. The first is Army of the Dead, the tiger kill. Okay. Tiger gets somebody, that's all I'll say. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen it. And, um... Probably the Suicide King Squad. King Shark. King Shark. You know the one. The King Shark one. Some? Oh. Yep. Like. Yes. One? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. That is my number one kill of the year. Yeah. That was no fun. doubt. No straight doubt. Straight out of the comics. That's like straight out of the comics. So yeah. sick. If I'm not mistaken. That was um, uh, that scene. That we, uh, IMAX. Because sometimes it'll go like big, you know. Oh, yeah. I got to see that in IMAX too. And oh, just for fun. that one, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you don't find that distracting? The aspect ratio change? No. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me either. No, yeah. Cause it like um, Yeah, no. Some shows do it and you don't even notice, and then you're like, yeah. did the aspect ratio like Legion was good yeah. at that. Like you're like, did the aspect ratio change? And I feel like for Suicide Squad and Dune as well, like Dune, I think all of it was filmed in IMAX, so it never uh, okay, yeah. Or like the think, the vast majority. Yeah, that might be correct. Uh, Vrun Kachwaha, the best movie I have seen this year. I want to shout out four films in particular this year. Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah. Amazing performance. That was this year? A story that tugs at the heart. I don't know. It might have been. I don't know. Whatever. Well, t- everything counts. Yeah, it counts. Count it. What everything the hell? counts. Hell of a Every- movie. Netflix, TV, last year. Count it. Next year. It came out this year and it was great. The speed, um, it counts. Speed. Great film, 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Violet Evergarden, the movie? I've never even heard of this. Released in 2021 for the UK. Such an avalanche of emotions. This film is truly a fitting conclusion to the series. What? Uh, I've never even heard of this. The incredible animation being the cherry on top, an incredibly delicious cake. 
Dune, such an incredible experience. Can't wait for part two. The way the visuals are crafted, the sound is particular. Uh, it really was a feast for the sen senses. Spider-Man, no way from home. The less said, the better here, I presume. You presume correctly. Check out our... <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam Sorensen says, uh, in my opinion, Dune. So that's three Dunes Dune, already. Dune. 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 Uh, loved it. Been a long time since I read the book, but I knew some of the backstory. But I think that Denis Villeneuve did an amazing job giving the power proper context for what was shown. Best and I'm best. stoked that part two will get made. Yeah, I'm also very happy part two Unreal. is actually, actually going to happen. Unreal. What they did so well in Dune was just the reality of stuff. Like, Because yep. in the book, they'll talk about like the Harkonnen canon for a while or whatever. Yeah. And in the movie, it's just like, yo, those guys have lasers. These guys have this. And that's just how it is. Cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know they don't explain mentats at all they don't mm -hmm. explain they probably could have explained why spice is important a little more because next like one, next one from the movie you don't understand like no these guys do space drugs so they can do space math so they can travel through space like because yeah. computers are outlawed because of the wars like <laughs> it's just like next okay one. yeah no they're not going to get into it in the next one that's like nor that's not fremen stuff whatever um whatever Super Sushi, as, uh, as I'm going through the releases of 2021, I realized I haven't seen a whole lot of them, but I enjoy contributing to con conversations, so here we go. Number one, A Quiet Place 2. That was uh, this year's shit. Yeah, hey. sequels in horror movies tend to be crap, but I think this one works perfectly. Just as tense as the first one, despite spoilers for number one, they uh, have some tools at their disposal, let's just say. Really looking forward to seeing part three. Part two um, made me really like the creatures. Yeah, their I liked creatures part two were cooler in two than one. I liked one more, but the yeah. creatures were better in two. I'd agree with that. I I liked two developed some stuff in in interesting ways. Mm -hmm. um, also, they really liked uh, Black Widow and Shang Chi. Sure. Sadly, haven't seen No Way Home yet. Michael Seward. Um, for me, it's Bob Odenkirk's Nobody. Yeah, Nobody dude. Hype. I saw Nobody. I liked it. A film that came out of nowhere with the cinematography of Breaking Bad and an effortless cool, great music choices and action throughout, and the bus, feet, bus fight scene was a highlight. Nobody, dude. It's good. Nobody hype. It's on it my fun. list. I need to watch it. I was gonna, you still I, haven't seen it? No, I was going to watch it the other day, and I watched The Novice, actually. That oh, okay. That rowing girl. Nobody's fun, dude. I was in the mood for a, just a drama. Sometimes you just want a drama. Um, Carl Williams... Uh, the Father. Hate to say it, but the slate of prestige films this year have left little to be desired. I found the majority to be incredibly dull and uninteresting. And for the ones that I actually did like, they provided me little to no emotion from watching. The fact that the best thing I saw in 2021 is a movie that not only came out in the early part of the year, but was nominated and won a few Oscars due to the wonky eligibility, eligibility period because of COVID is pretty telling. Amazing performances from both Olivia Coleman and Anthony Hopkins, and a story that can leave you both ten sad. Ten out of ten. I thought that was also last frustrated. Year. The father. Yeah, well, it was it was in Oscars last year, but that I is truly one of the best year. I've seen in in years. That movie is incredible. I never saw it. Oh my god! Seen. Quietly devastating movie. Yeah, it seems sad, and I Jesus. kind of was like, nah. <laughs> yeah, that um, movie's awesome. Gotta see it. Daniel Ray. Uh, favorite was Riders of Justice. Yes, Mads! It's me going ruled! Off, going off the poster, you'd think it was just some cheesy action movie starring the brilliant Mads Mikkelsen slumming it. You'd be wrong. Instead, this film is the best examination of chaos theory I've ever seen. <laughs> Add to that the most likable cast of any film they from 2021. Plus it being an awesome action film, it's my number one. How did I miss this? I didn't even know about this. We talked about it. We did? We've talked about it, yeah. Oh, I remember you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember you talking about it. You can rent this sucker for probably a couple bucks only. Oh, okay, I'll have to see. Yeah. It. Oh, you'll love it, yeah, obviously. I love Mads. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't seen another round. It just seems like it'll be really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie Garza, uh, best movie of the year has to be Nightmare Alley. It is incredibly directed, acted, shot, written, and although you see the plot twist coming... You do. It uh, <laughs> is still somehow rewarding, or somehow so rewarding when they do. 10 out of 10 movie. Highly recommend it. Guillermo fan or not, I think everyone would like this movie. Also just mentioned some other movies that I enjoyed watching this year and would recommend. Spider-Man No Way Home, Quiet Place 2, House of Gucci, and The Heights. 
Judas, Black Messiah, everybody's talking about Jamie, Fear Street Trilogy, ex- exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> and lastly, the pro shot of Come From Away. Don't, I don't fully understand that last thing, but sure. Sure. Thank you. Dude, Fear Street, so good. Fear Street uh, hype. Fear Street hype. Um, Jason Wojnar, I haven't really seen any new releases, unfortunately. West Side Story might have been the best one from 2021. Sick. Nathan Curse, Liquid Wait. Pizza. What? Wait, I need to. Oh, it was in Cobra Kai. <laughs> Are you ready oh for this? Is this Lord? a Billy Jack? Re- re- they reference, reference Billy Jack. <laughs> oh, Billy no. Jack reference. We need to watch that. We need to check if it's on. We need to check if it's on Amazon, whatever. Also, yeah. we have to finish Patriot. Yes. Or we should just watch it with the Wojnar brothers and, like, do a commentary oh. track or something. Like, oh my God, we have to. We have to. Cobra Kai reference, Wojnar's, get on it. Billy Wojnar's, Jack. Wojnar's, you got to watch Cobra Kai mm-hmm. now, Wojnar's. Yep. It's part of the canon. Um, Nathan, it's part of the canon. <laughs> Nathan Kerr's Licorice Pizza is probably the best time I had at a movie all year. The script is hilarious. The performances are masterful across the board, and Paul Thomas Anderson's return to his mm-hmm. early roots of cribbing from Robert Altman and Scorsese made me feel emotions I hadn't felt in a movie theater in a long time. Alana Haim and Cooper Hoffman are absolute superstars. I'm not sure I felt more emotion in the theater this year than seeing Hoffman on screen for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh... He, uh, he moves and reacts so much like his father. It gave me a visceral and a unexpected emotional reaction. Who's his father? Philip Seymour Hoffman, right? Oh, shit. Okay, that makes sense. From moment to moment, PTA is romanticizing, satirizing, and accurately reflecting 1970s Hollywood and prevailing into attitudes, questionable behaviors of the time. I wasn't always comfortable with the content, but I think that was the intention. When we're talking about movies, specifically works of fiction, PTA clearly believes that raw, imperfect emotion... Uh, Trump's being agreeable. Licorice Pizza might be the most gloriously disagreeable, his most gloriously disagreeable work to date. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Sam, I never even saw Phantom Thread. I'm behind on my PTA oh, lore. Me too. Jesus. Sucks. Yep. I've been falling down. I like P.T. Anderson usually. What, dude, what, like, one of the best of all time, no question. In terms yeah. of like entire filmography, oh, one sure. of the best. Solid ever. always, yeah. Ever. Top, top, top tier. I'm trying to think. I can't think of a stinker in the bunch. Nope. I mean, people were a little less on Inherent Vice, but I like it. Oh, yeah, I didn't like Inherent Vice. In fact, I forgot about it until you just said it. (laughs) It's got a great mood. It reminds me of a not good version of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Or a not not good version of Big Lebowski. Like, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, you're right, I should just be watching Big Lebowski. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely is worse, but so good. Colin Goodspeed. You know what your name means, don't you? Goodspeed. 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 Godspeed. Um, a- if Bo Burnham's inside that? counts. Vaporize? Uh, I will not give that order. Uh, if Bo Burnham's inside counts, th- that's the one. It counts, baby. Everything counts. Everything counts. It's definitely the thing I rewatched the most this year. It's such a beautifully constructed descent into depression, performance, and frustrations of being a creative person. I have seen it, and I did dig it. Uh, if it doesn't count, then Licorice Pizza, PTA's funniest, and just, <clears throat> pardon me, such a pure blast at the movies. Honorable mm. mention, Titane, totally fucking nuts, but also weirdly touching. Pig, beautifully subtle, and Green Knight, usually don't care for medieval fantasy, and walking, walked away loving this film. My voice is failing on me. Hang on. <clears throat> Only movie I actively do not like is The Green Knight. I know. I was going to say, you hate that Only movie. one. <laughs> Only movie I legitimately do not like. That's you can okay. make your movie complex and meditative. You just have to read the poem, Huber. Yeah, meditative. You can poem. make it beautiful and complex, but also have, like, characters that are, like, that have real emotions. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> that's baby shit, man. Feelings? Come on. <laughs> yeah, there's no feelings. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> um, his girlfriend seemed to, to have feelings. Other than that, yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody had feelings in that movie. Um, Shaz, greetings, Island Huber. Hope you Yo. are both well. Hi, 
Uh, we are both well. I am. I don't know. Very are well. You, are you well? Okay, good. I'm well. Uh, yeah, I'll say I'm well. I'm well. I'm well. I'm well. Um, I love watching. I hope you're well, Shaz. Yeah. I love watching reaction shots and absorbing all the knowledge and passion from the community. Yes, so do I. I learn more every time. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the best movie of the year, but one of my favorites was The Matrix Resurrections. Sick. The original Matrix was my favorite movie of all time, and I loved Reloaded and Revolutions as well. So I was so I was coming into this expecting a dumb reason for Neo and Trinity to come back. For me, the reason wasn't dumb and made complete sense in the context of the world. I especially loved Io. Humans and sentience living together were yeah. so cool to see. I agree. Yeah. Reading why Lana Wachowski chose to take the story in this direction is heartwarming, and you can tell she didn't make the movie because of a cash grab, mm -hmm. as I have seen some people say online. Yeah, that's the action, garbage. Yeah. People say well, that. I mean, I mean, in the movie itself, they yeah. say Warner Brothers was going to make it with or without them, so yeah. she was like, okay. <laughs> the action was not on the level of the original trilogy. That's very true. Yep. But that makes Worst sense because... As the original fight choreographer wasn't involved in this one, a few of the jokes didn't land for me, but uh, those were my only complaints with the movie. Yeah, Matrix 4 is a really interesting one. I guess we haven't talked about it at all on here. It's, I like it. I didn't hate it. Like, yeah. it's not good in, like, the same way that Matrix 1 is good. Mm -hmm. Like, the action isn't great, and, like, they made some filmmaking choices that were just bizarre... To the point that I have to think, I don't know if I've said this before, but I have to think that it's on purpose. Yeah. Because, like, the slow motion, like, low shutter speed thing looked so bad that yeah. I think it was intentional, intentionally using an archaic filmmaking practice to not try to outdo bullet time, like, on mm. purpose. That's my theory. Yeah, it was Like, weird. I think she did that on purpose to, like, have an homage to, like, old mm. movies. Because otherwise it doesn't make any sense because it looked yeah. terrible. But yeah, I thought that the the ideas and thoughts in the movie were really fun and interesting. Same, yeah. I agree. I really like Jessica Henwick. I really just like Neo and, and Trinity Yeah. on my television screen or yeah. wherever that may be. Like sometimes the, the most basic thing is all you need. Like yeah. them in it, like, all the, you know, and that's what I was thinking of when I was watching it. It's just like just seeing them get to like love each other or like yeah. try to love each other. I'm in. I'm here yeah, for it. <laughs> absolutely. And also like the Wachowski's oeuvre is like not all hits, mm -hmm. you know? They've got like I one love or them two... all, but they're not all hits. Right, exactly. They've yeah. got like one or two solid hits and then like three or four kind of half hits <laughs> yeah. and then a few kind of misses. Hits. Yeah, yeah, like make do-it-yourself hits where you're like, that's what this one is like. It's like, it's a hit if you want it to be. Yep, like, yep, <laughs> yep, like yep. You just have to want it. So true. Uh, yeah, the action, uh, the action is really, the action really is horrible. It, it really it is it horrible. Yeah. Straight it, bad. It, if the action was net, like John Wick levels or, or old yeah. Matrix levels, I think the, the sentiment around the movie would have been way more positive for I sure. I think so too. Yeah. And like, it, it's bad on like every level. Like the yeah. choreography was poor. The, uh -huh. the, the shooting was bad. Like there the only, editing was bad. The, there, the action, just fighting yeah. itself wasn't good. Like it was There was a couple cool seconds when there was a lot of people on screen at once. I think those were the best action shots. Sure. A couple scenes where there's just a lot of people on the on a frame. <laughs> they need to redo those action shots. Reaction shots. Nice. Patreon.com slash easy alley. Cold Smith. This is a hard question for me because the year feels so foggy. Yeah, mm -hmm. same. So Are we blends. sure 2020 ended? No, I don't think it did. Encanto is a solid film with a great cast. West Side Story was Spielberg at his best. Dune was a visual feast that was also a great story, albeit one that desperately needs a part two. They're working on it, allegedly, or they mm. will be. The Last Duel was a standout for incredible acting. Suicide Squad was fun, heartfelt, and amazingly funny. The Green Knight was fun. Sorry, Huber. I love the old story in this movie. Just felt right to me. Werewolves <laughs> Within nice. is funny and charming. That's true. I liked Werewolves Within. Uh, Fear Street uh, trilogy, of course. But the best of the year for me was probably Last Night in Soho. I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, the cast was outstanding, the mystery was compelling, and the cinematography was top-notch. Honorable mention to Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh, I almost forgot Evangelion Thrice Upon a Time, one of my faves. Lots of exclamation points here. I forgot to add it, but it goes under best of the year for sure. 
uh, Hide Hideaki Ano basically saying the kids are gonna be all right in the culmination of all EVA uh, and one gorgeous reflection on life, forgiveness, love, and learning to look forward with hope. Spoilers. I don't want to know that there's hope. Gotta give them um, hope. Logan, to hope is a disease. Logan to Toas Tawase try it every time, and I I don't know. What movie were they talking about there? Evangelion, Thrice uh, Upon a okay. Time. Never seen any any of it. Couldn't even I, guess about. I what love any of the it is. crossover with Tenacious D that someone made on YouTube. Oh, Look it up. It's, it's not okay. It's unofficial. Um, unofficial. It spoils the shit out of Evangelion. Okay. Though, but whatever. We all know how it ends. Um, or do we? I don't know. There's I don't like know eight shit endings. about it. I know nothing. Logan, Spider-Man No Way Home ended up being my favorite of 2021, and I think it might be my favorite MCU movie now. The Spidey movies have always been my favorite comic book movies, besides the first two Nolan Batman ones. Uh, and combining all the universes was a treat. Uh, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Uh, spoilers, blah, 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 blah. Coast is someone who's been loving these movies for 20 years. Uh, honorable mentions go to No Time to Die and Fear Street. Uh, I really like No Time to Die. Same, yeah. I feel like I maybe should have put it on my list. It was an honorable mention for me. I really liked yeah. it as well. Yeah, add it to mine too. I loved it. Yeah. I love the Bond. I love the Bond, uh, or the uh, Daniel Craig Bond movies. Yep. Even the bad ones are great. Like, mm -hmm. I rewatched Quantum of Solace and Skyfall on the plane the other day. Good uh, run. Good run, Daniel Curry. They're just all, f all f five of them? Five, yep. Pretty solid. And, like, they flow together really well. Most consistent bond, I yeah. feel like. Yeah, oh, absolutely. No question. Well, and they, they played him like a human being mm -hmm. instead of a cartoon character, which I appreciated. Because, yeah. like, for um, as much as I love, GoldenEye is my, like, number one Bond movie. But it's, like, different. It's, it's a different so thing. different. And, like, Pierce yeah. Brosnan is a cool Bond, but, like, that's his only good movie. That's it. The other ones are so bad. Oh, the other, the other Brosnan Bonds They're are, yeah, not... They're so awful. They're not even, like... They have a few fun moments, but, yeah. yeah, they're not even, like, fun to rewatch. Yeah. Whereas these have, like, heart, you know? Yeah. And, you and can I love and when you, you, as you know. Yeah. And I feel like you said just how they all flow well together. Yeah. Like, you can watch they really all of them. They really fully do. Like, mm -hmm. you can watch all five, and, like, they all run into each other, and it's really, really good, and they yeah. all have through lines. and Yeah, good stuff. I was shocked that how much each of the previous movies, like, matters to mm -hmm. the... I also think that that was a really interesting experiment for Bond, is, like, to have continuity. Like, yeah. really, really important continuity. <laughs> like, if you haven't seen the other movies, No Time to Die is going to be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Hell really good. Movie. Really, really cool. Uh, Sam Joven really enjoyed Mortal Kombat, despite it feeling like a big budget fan fiction. Hmm. Casting was strong, but the actors were underutilized. And Dune was great. Atmospheric as fuck. More Denis, please. Matrix 4 was okay. Kind of surprised that the tone of the tech demo carried itself into the main film, but I didn't hate it. That's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, I figure if the studio was going to make another film with or without the original creators, this was a fun and inoffensive revisit to a beloved franchise. Pleasantly surprised by uh, Suicide Squad as well. Had little to no interest in it, but I ate those anti-hero hero antics up. Stefano Vettere, Island Huber, uh, Best of the Year, Pig, Power of the Dog. Um, films mesmer. I haven't seen Power of the Dog yet. Films mesmerizing. I was entranced from the first few frames. Unbelievable cinematography and score. Memorable performances. Jane Campion has a way of portraying men that is both brutal and compassionate. I like Jane Campion stuff. Uh, Bo Burnham Inside, The Green Knight. Um, love the visuals, just wish it had more of an impact on me than it did, yeah. Uh, Green the Night House. Green Knight, yeah. That is the best, kindest criticism. I'm going to start saying that. I mean, I kind of agree. Like, I enjoyed not, it, but I kind of agree. Because like, for me, that's it not... It got way overhyped. Yeah, for me, that's not enough. It's just so... It, like, every time I hear praise, it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. I it's mean, like, it's shit, I'll, I'll look at a painting. Like Right. Well, put throw it on... <laughs> a, if we ever get to have house parties again, throw, throw Green Knight silently on in the yeah. background. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Like, like throw that. Yodorowsky film on the projector. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Night House. I'm not one for horror films. Really love this one a lot. Dune. Went back to the theater for this one, and man, it was worth it. 
Uh, can't wait for part two. The Mitchells versus the Machines. I've heard that movie. It's okay, amazing. it's not into the Spider-Verse, but man, it was fun. <laughs> so much creativity and heart in every frame of this. I had a blast. My friend Lily worked on that, and she designed, like, she does, like, graphic design stuff, and I think she designed, like, all the little, like, stickers and stuff that the kids had on, like, the back of their phones and cool. stuff. Like, all kinds of stuff she did. Super cool. Um, Spider-Man No Way Home, Midnight Mass. Uh, yeah. Some yeah. of those visuals are still imprinted on my retinas. Retina, retinas. Retinas. Good God, the atmosphere in this show is impeccable, and that scene with them on the couch talking about death is amazing. Yeah. yeah. F- one of my favorite scenes of the year, for sure. Yeah. Far and away. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tokyo Slim did a fun thing. Uh, he, he made his top 21 of 21. So here we go. <laughs> uh, he has sentences about the first 11. Um, essays about the final 10. <laughs> essays about the final 10. Uh, number one, Pig is the rare film with an outlandish number premise one? grounded by a strange or br- brilliant you performance. You started at the top? By Nicolas Cage. Yeah, that was his number one. Sick. Two, last night in Soho snuck up on me. I hadn't heard much buzz about it. Watched it. Was shocked at how much I vibed with the... Oh, this is Tokyo Slim, Patriot Saint of... Yeah. Whatever. Snuck up. Uh, they were, I'm surprised Tokyo Slim because they were hyping that... They were advertising it. For yeah. like three years. But then I heard like bad right. buzz. So <clears> it's... <throat> we. I don't know where people stand on this movie. Weird. I guess it's good. I want to see it. Uh, three, Strawberry Mansion lived up to... Oh, wait. Strawberry Mansion lived in the number one spot all year until Pig came out. I've talked about my love for this twee, whimsical, dream logic, science fiction romance before, but I hope more people get to see it in 2022. I have not even heard of it. Yeah, what? Uh, Tokyo Slim, what do you, what do you... Strawberry Mansion, I guess. Check it out. Uh, four is Spooderman, No Way Home. I'm not going to read that because it's a spoiler. Uh, five, Mad God. I know some of you are really going to dig this when it gets a wider release this year. It's a 40-minute stop-motion journey into straight-up weirdness and chaos. Genius. Sounds great. Six, no time to die. Is that the one with the animals in the house? I think that's called House. The is house. That, it's not out yet. There's like mice, and it's like yeah. Stop. That one is called when the house. When is that out? It I looks wanna fucking terrifying. It's I, up like in a week or like I, this month. Yes. It looks so unsettling. I yes. don't want to watch that. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it looks unsettling. I will watch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, six, no time to die. Really brought me back around on the Craig Bond franchise. Isn't the high of Casino Royale, but it's a fitting capstone for his run uh any movie that recognizes the brilliance of ohmss is okay by me and this movie references the hell out of o- on his majesty secret service is yeah, that I guess so, okay yeah. i was like ohmss <laughs> uh seven dune while incomplete it was really cool visually i think i wanted it's what i wanted from a villain villeneuve helmed dune i just hope they make enough of these where i get where it gets weird yeah dune gets weird uh dune one is plenty weird already Mm -hmm. um eight riders of justice hell yeah uh not quite what you think it is in the best way uh nine french dispatch i really think wes anderson has found something his past few films that was missing earlier both this and grand budapest are in my opinion among his best works i would agree 10 red rocket i've heard of this i've heard this is good sean baker is quietly becoming one of my favorite Absolute favorite American screenwriters, directors, Tangerine, Florida Project, Red Rocket was a hell of a resume. I like Tangerine a lot. Um, 11, Summer of Soul is the first documentary on this list, and I think it's my favorite of the year. A stunning doc put together out of lost, quote-unquote, archival footage of a staggering event dubbed the Black Woodstock. It's inarguably just as culturally relevant an event and film. Hmm. Ten, uh, 12 in the heights 13 the last duel 14 undyne uh 15 flea 16 i think it's potato dreams of america 17 the innocence 18 green knight 19 the card counter 20 titan a 21 no sudden moves <sighs> sick uh conrad frazier and no sudden move love it oh sick he's in there i gotta watch that uh conrad Cron- cruncho cruncho <laughs> cruncho cruncho <laughs> we're just having fun with it now Conrad. love that name uh, but we've Powerful never name. said it correctly in Powerful. our entire lives we've never said it right Conrad uh, Crunzio <laughs> like yeah. such power oh it's good love it it's good uh, best movie Dune Dune uh, best combination of 25 years yes. of making Neon yes. Genesis Evangelion oh, okay 
uh, best WrestleMania special, Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> it said, put my subwoofer through its paces in the best way possible. Could have used a fist bump at the end, though. Uh, best Nicolas Cage in a non-speaking role. Could have used a fist bump at the end is so correct. <laughs> the two monsters. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> yeah. Where was the fist bump? Uh, best Nicolas Cage in a non-speaking role, Willy's Wonderland. Cage is here to chew scenery, not words. Best horror, Malignant. James Wan still has some cool ideas and a great sense for horror pacing. A bit predictable, that's but where I, that's where I got, That's where I got screwed, Isla. You said you didn't watch something on HBO? Uh, uh, I just wish Dune was still oh, on okay. it so I could watch it again. I was saving Malignant for Halloween night. Oh. And, and it, it was it was gone. It left on Halloween night? Yeah, it was, it was gone. I was like, uh, What? Most disappointing, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't... Y- yeah. It's, it's, it's like a stab to the belly. Because it's like, oh, I guess this franchise has... You're watching the franchise slowly run out of steam. That that entire movie you're watching, like... I'm surprised the, it took this long. Yeah, yeah. It it's had a, a run. hell of a run. A hell yeah. of a run. But it was like, this is diminishing returns. Diminishing returns the movie. Uh, best animated uh, best most essential animated tie-in the witcher nightmare of the wolf <gasps> Vesemir and all hype. Yes. I don't know who that is but it sounds fun uh, best Geralt's restoration trainer best like restoration Geralt's Zack and Snyder's Jack, Zack Snyder's Justice League who do you know there's actually a pretty decent movie in there I loved it uh, best reboot that was also a sequel Suicide Squad uh, most pleasant surprise don't look up never thought I would recommend a direct to netflix adam mckay movie but here we are a little long otherwise pointed satire with a couple of laugh out loud moments movies i wish i'd watched in time for this post the green knight antler pig nobody free guy prisoners of ghostland and titan a yeah never even saw free guy what i never even saw free guy yeah happy new year to you and isla or isla and huber and all the reaction shots contributors and listeners here's to hoping I'll not go three years without visiting visiting a cinema theater. Love and respect as always. Thanks. Yes. Shout out. Nick Gothic. The only thing I saw this year was Matrix, Resur- Matrix Resurrections. And as another trans person who lost her parents, don't we all relate? Yeah. It really meant to me. Uh, it really meant a lot to me to see and share the pain Lana was going through. I loved it because to me, it gave me the ending to the Matrix that I always wanted, and what I thought Revolutions was lacking. Revolutions didn't have a good enough clo- didn't have good enough closure to me. Yeah. The resurrection uh, shows so many bright spots that cheered me up. And at this point in my life, I really felt like Neo trapped in the Matrix again. It in an endless cycle of going to work, taking pills, barely eating, having to deal with the same annoying people all the time, and wondering just why, what purpose I have in my life. It felt really distressing how similar our lives felt, and I honestly couldn't wait longer to see him get out of it. And now I just hope I'm seeing the same light that Neo has. It helps me to know that everything he has worked for was not in vain. I Hell liked yeah. that comment. I really like that comment. I love that comment. Because when like they're when they're trying to tell a story that means this much to people and is so personal, like you feel that. They they tried. Yeah. The movie isn't necessarily great, but the effort outweighs the the like quality, I guess. For me, yeah. like you yeah. know, rather to try hard and fall on your face than like not. Or you know, I was just thinking about Game of Thrones, like Ugh. phoning it in. So it's like yeah. I can't really they give just it. Stopped. They just gave yeah. up. Yeah. Whereas this, it's like, dude, they went for it. Like some people don't like it. It didn't didn't you know? It wasn't the best. The execution, but the. The message and all that was so, so good. Um, I asked, I agree completely. I asked uh, our patrons for hidden gems. I think that a lot of people's favorite movies would qualify as hidden gems, like some of Tokyo Slims I've never even heard of. Gem, honestly. Pig is a hidden gem, sure. Um, but I'm just going to read through these quick. I'll just say the movies and not the explanations for most of these, I think. Uh Mellow Fellow, Small Engine Repair, uh, Varun Kachwaha, Green Knight, uh, Riggs Ray, uh, Pig, yeah, 
Colt, Colt Smith Saint Maud, Saint which Maud. I've heard is really good. Um, Space Sweepers on Netflix. Censor, I've heard that's really good too. Um, the Feast and Val. Val, um, no, I Kitty, really want to watch Val. I really want to see that too, yeah. Kitty Garza, maybe not a hidden gem, but not a lot of people are talking about Last Night in Soho. Uh, Michael Seward, Palmer. Um, Arnold Palmer. It's a neglected boy taken in by a reformed convict, I guess. It's an Apple TV thing. Fucking Apple uh, TV. And Justin Timberlake's in it, apparently giving a really good performance. Um, Super Sushi, uh, a classic horror story, an Italian horror movie produced by Netflix mm-hmm. about five strangers getting lost in the woods. Sounds pretty cool. Also, shout out to Nighthouse. Um, Nathan Curse, uh, The Last Duel. Uh, they go on. They talk about the reasons. Um, uh, Carl Williams, Titane. 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 Daniel Ray, Cop Shop. Cop Shop looked sick. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. A few Just people a mention it. OG like ninety style action movie. Let's go. Yeah, Colin Goodspeed, Zola. Zola. Uh, Sam Sorensen, Green Knight. Uh, Logan Twas, Werewolves Within. I'd say that's a good... Yeah, that was a really fun movie. Uh, the King's Man, just because nobody went to see it. Uh, Stefano Vettere has a few here. Finch, Riders of Justice, Spontaneous. Worst movie poster I've ever seen, but for the best teen romance horror <laughs> comedy I saw this year. Sick. Uh, Tear Along the Dotted Line, animated miniseries uh, from Italy. Looks cool. Um... Shaz uh, just says not many people mentioned Encanto and they really liked it. Uh, I asked what the best worst movie of 2021 was of our patrons. Jason Morgenar says Dune. (laughs) What? Obviously well made and put together with real thought and love, but there was a lot I didn't like about it. It's clearly made for people who who already like the book, which isn't a bad thing, but it also doesn't mean I have to like it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Vrun Kuchwaha did not like Matrix Resurrections. I oh, liked what it was trying to do in act, yeah, in aspects, and I liked that it was kind of tried something different, and that and it, that it retconned some of the dumb stuff from Revolutions. Uh, but the execution of the of these things left a lot to be desired. The action was definitely a big letdown, especially when compared to what came before. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're watching it as a fun action movie, yeah. like, yeah, it's not gonna, not gonna, not gonna hold up. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Trinity. I just want to say that right now. Dude, yeah. Shout out. Trinity, man. Just in general, one of the most iconic characters of all time. Trinity. Uh, Colin Goodspeed, don't look up. It's such an obvious hit you over the head satire, enormously unsubtle, totally pandering, and edited like a true coked out maniac. <laughs> but all that being said, I totally had an enjoyable time watching it and was not bored for a second. I'm a liberal, but it's basically just a popcorn Marvel style satire for us libs to pat ourselves on the back and say, yeah, this is how it is, isn't it? Very dumb, but fun. I mean, you're not wrong. I think in my Letterboxd review, I said it's the first pre documentary. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just scanning through these real quick. Uh, uh, Nathan Curse, I don't necessarily think this movie was bad at all, but Malignant is a movie that was considered by many to be trashy or off-center, but that I thought was absolutely masterful. Yeah, some people, I don't know the it's twist. Very, I have a feeling I have a see. feeling I know the twist because of the way people have I had a guess it. of the twist from the yeah. trailer, but then Ben or somebody was mm. like, no, 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 you don't know, but then everyone yeah. else is like, you see it coming a mile away, and I'm like, okay, then yeah. I guess I probably guessed it from the trailer. Pretty but. divisive, I've heard. Um, one of those situations where some people call it a masterpiece and some people say it's trash those conversations are always fun yeah (laughs) and i mean that seems to be what people say about most things it's it's either totally perfect or garbage and it's like nothing in between it's like what if i told you that everything is just a six except for the the four or five things that are fine uh is the only 10 uh, he says honorable mention to Shyamalan's Old, which was truly bizarre and all. Just right. watched it the other night. Really? Yes. Is it good? Entertaining. Entertaining. It's uh. It's, it's about what all you can hope for out of our friend M Knight. 
It is. It These is days? softly gripping. Does that make sense? <laughs> Okay. Softly gripping. You will be you will be intrigued and gripped softly through you know, you just can't look away. You're just watching. What's gonna happen? What's what are you what are you what are you playing at, Shyamalan? Um best performances I asked about from the year. Um I already shouted out the main character and the worst person in the world. I really thought she was a great a great one. Nicholas um, Cage. Yeah, Nicholas Cage, truly one of his best. Super Sushi says Rebecca Hall as the yes. grief-stricken grief Beth in the Night House. So great. Carl Williams, Agatha Roussel, and Vincent Linden in Titane. Titane. Absolutely true. Titane. 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 Whatever. Uh, Daniel Ray, Will Smith, and King Richard. I heard he did a good job. He just won a Golden Globe or something for that. He was good in it. Um, Shaz, the whole cast of Midnight Mass. Yes. Absolutely yes. true. Yes. Uh, yes. Special shout out to Hamish Linklater. Uh, his scenes with Zach Guilford in the AA meetings were beautiful. Zach Guilford hype. Matt Which Saracen. Which Zach Guilford? Um, main main man. Riley. Riley. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Riley. Um. Katie Garza, Kate Blanchett, and Nightmare Alley. Um. Yeah, you can't really talk about it without getting spoilery, mm. but she does a really good job. Uh, she, she also is, shouts out honestly, Lady Gaga and House of Gucci. I feel like Kate Blanchett is truly an elf. Kate Blanchett is is she looks yeah, she's, thirty. She's an energy being from a different <laughs> yeah. reality. She's a goddess. Yeah. She yeah. probably like I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if like if someone found out that <laughs> she's like a Celtic nature goddess who yeah. just like wanted to do movies. Yep. Yeah. And and so, then oh, okay. And then she was just like. Please don't tell anyone. And they were like, okay. <laughs> it's just like, I believe it. I believe yeah. it. I think that that is true. And I think that that happened. Yep. Uh, Cold Smith says Rachel Ziegler and Alana Haim in uh, Licorice Pizza. And Morphide Clark in St. Maud. Did you see St. Maud? I heard it was really good. I have not. It's on uh, Hulu, I think. Oh, okay. I heard it's Scree. Yeah. Sam Sorensen, pretty much everyone in French Dispatch. Absolutely true. Uh, God, that movie's good. Um, what about the best performance of 2021? For real. Kate Winslet. Mary Vee's time. Oh, yeah. To me, it's number one. she won one for that, of, too. Yeah, she did. She did. To me, uh, it's number one of the year TV or movies or video games or inside of your mind when you're reading a book. <laughs> Kate wins radio plays one. radio better than radio <laughs> all categories better than the, the painting somebody drew it's the best yeah uh nathan curse likes nicholas cage and pig second best nick cage and just Simon behind Kate. Red Rocket. <laughs> uh stefano also nicholas cage and pig benedict cumberbatch and jesse plemons and power of the dog J uh, jody comer and last duel mads mickelson and rider of justice and shout out to mckenna grace and ghostbusters afterlife she did a really good job yeah i liked that that movie was cute i don't know i didn't hate it um i heard Colin it's called speed. ghostbusters colon pandering that's that's the that that's what angry people like to say yeah. i don't know like i saw it after hearing all those complaints like mm -hmm. oh the third act is just a nostalgia grab and like yeah. 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 It's Spider Man No like, Way Home is could be in in the but most cynical. Spider Man No Way Home did There's it some pandering. Better. Yeah. By far. But there's but some like, pandering, it's fine. But Ghost Ghostbusters Afterlife definitely has some moments where it's like, this doesn't even make sense. Like oh, this okay. is literally pointless. It's just to pander. Just like to little pander. stay puff marshmallows. It's like yeah. that doesn't even make sense, really. Sometimes you just want to be pandered to. But like at the same <laughs> time, like it had heart and it felt fun and yeah. whatever. Go fuck yourself. I don't yeah. know. Uh I thought it was cute. Nice. Like, it's obviously not a great movie. I mean, I liked the female one. I don't give a shit oh, what yeah. anyone 20, says. 2016? I laughed I some moments. I think that yeah. the script needed some work. Like, sure. They just let them improv a little too much, but, like, yeah. I, I didn't hate it. Whatever. Yeah. Life is for living, you know? Not exactly. for being pissed all the time. Uh, and then uh, I asked them if anything else they wanted to talk about. Uh, I think Zero Humans mentioned Welcome to Raccoon City. A few people mentioned uh, Resident Evil. It's on my need-to-watch list. Okay. Most uh, disappointing? Michael Seward <laughs> said Halloween Kills is one of the worst Halloween films ever. I'm <laughs> so torn on it. the final installment, but I, nothing could be as bad as that. I don't know if I... T 
tolerate it or if I despise it. The jury's still out. I don't yeah. know. But wait, the because, best you can hit is tolerate? Well, it, maybe what's what's one tick above tolerate? Because evil dies tonight might Except? be the best. Yeah, yes. evil dies tonight might be the best thing Halloween's ever done. <laughs> <laughs> you accept it. Yeah. You, you, you know you what it is. You accept it without malice. You know what it you is. Just, you just let it exist. Uh, yeah. Like what? Like what? Like what? We the gay community want is just to be fucking left alone. <laughs> just and to live, live and let live. Just let us live. Uh, the fuck off. I think it all hinges on the third movie. It's one of those situations yeah, now yeah. where if the third one is amazing, it's like okay, then the second one's fine, whatever. Yeah. But if it's also I've been bad, watching. I just realized I've been watching too much Succession because, like, they say fuck off almost constantly in that. They literally, literally, like, I wonder if anyone has done, I can't look it up because I'll get spoiled. Probably, uh, F but, off like, count? If, if anyone's have ever done a fuck off yeah. counter for Succession, because it's like, it has to average, like, six an yeah. episode. They should make then a montage. Fuck off! They should make yeah, a montage. Oh, so I'm sh I guarantee someone made a fuck yeah. off montage. And if they didn't, someone should. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Uh, You're on Billy Nathan Jack. Kers Nathan Curse really likes Billy Jack. Yeah. <laughs> no, they really like the Beatles Get Back. Nice. Peter um, Jackson crushing it. Several World people War One either... in color, Beatles Get Back, like documentary maestro. Who? Peter Jackson? Peter Jackson. Oh, wow, okay. Two, Quiet yeah. Quietly winning? Yeah. Um, several people, there's like a little shit fight going on in the comments between whether or not Barb and Star is the worst thing ever or really funny. Barb and Stars? Go to Vista, go, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar? A few people said like it was terrible and uh, someone else said it was good. What is it? It's just a comedy, I don't know. Uh, Shaz Wait, Lander is that Kane. with, um... It had the guy from Upgrade in it and like... Kirsten, Logan Marshall Kirsten Green? Wig. I don't know his name. Shocker in uh, the original Shocker in Spider-Man Homecoming. I don't know. He was on an episode of Stir Crazy that I edited. All right. Maybe the guy from... Oh, wait. Maybe it was the guy from uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know. Jamie Dornan? Jamie Dornan. Yeah. Yo, That's did you ever not see the upgrade guy. Have you ever seen him with with him and and Scully The Fall? Yeah, I watched season 1. I really liked it. Oh my god, I watched that this year. I haven't I haven't oh seen my the, the follow-up seasons. Are they good? Oh my god, so good. So I need to keep good. watching it. I I just got kind of depressed. I it's really so like so heavy. It's so out of control. Yeah, too it's much. It's so heavy. Dude. It's too much almost. It's so yeah. heavy. One my episode favorite, though, a, a week. <laughs> yeah, my favorite though is like episode two or one when Jillian Anderson just like wants to fuck that other cop and he's like, Let me go shower, and she's like, No, I like it. And then <laughs> yeah. they just go at it. And I'm just like, Yeah, girl, get it. Love her. Love it. She's legendary in it um jason wojnar we're getting long on time so i'll just jason wojnar shot out shouted out some classics from the soviet union and the ukraine okay uh four notable fantastic movies ballad of a soldier the cranes are flying the ascent babylon xx babylon xx sounds like a jrpg Apparently, it's part historical drama, part erotic comedy and satire about a Ukrainian village during the early years of the USSR. Babylon XX. But apparently, it's funny. Yeah. Sick. Um, Colt Smith just missed some that they really wanted to see, like Tragedy of Macbeth, Ghostbusters, and Nightmare Alley. Same. I need to see Tragedy of Macbeth still. Um... Jesse Blue didn't get to watch enough movies, but li loves living vicariously through this podcast. <laughs> Same. Um, and but she says, by the way, Huber, did you watch Jiri Haji yet? It's Not really yet. good. Not yet. It's got Mrs. Okay. Schroeder in there. I don't um, know what any of the things you're saying means. It's got. Uh, I'm blanking on names tonight. I'm so sorry, dude. I've been. We've been Black shooting Mirror stuff B all day. Episode. The Bees episode? Yeah. Oh, I love her. Anna Torv? No, not not Fringe Anna Torv. Anna Torv! No, other one. Other, other girl. Huh? Damn it. 
I don't remember the other girl because I like Anna Torv. <laughs> Google it. Just Kelly McDonald. Look. Kelly McDonald. Kelly McDonald. Oh, I love her. So good. She's one of my all-time favorites. Yes. She's in this. She uh, in most hated in the nation or whatever. Yeah, she's in a show I want to watch. I love what Kelly McDonald. Hated in the nation. Yo, Anna Torv is in Hated in the Nation. Isn't she? Or is it Kelly McDonald? It's Kelly McDonald. Yo, if Look it's Anna it Torv though, that's sick. Hated in the Nation hype is a really good episode. I'm looking you know it what up. I watched? I thought Anna Torv was in that for some reason. Am I crazy? You're crazy. Oh no, it's I'm crazy. You know what it's, I watched? It's Kelly McDonald. That's who. Yeah, we're of. yeah. I love Kelly McDonald. You know what I watched? Christmas Week. No. White Christmas, Black Mirror. Oh, that's so depressing. Threw it in. Why would you do that? I love Kelly McDonald. I'm sorry I forsook her by forgetting about her. Uh, this year, for the first time, we were watching Christmas movies. For like, Christmas? Yeah. That's novel. Yeah. Did you watch I'm officially Muppet old. Christmas Carol? No, I was watching, like, Hallmark shit, Isla. Like, Christmas movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, Happiest Season, the yeah. not very good lesbian holiday movie? Just all of this stuff. But made sure to throw in Jingle All the Way to legitimize it. And, legitimized, yeah. And White Christmas, legitimized. Oh, yeah. Yeah, gotta like throw it in. Wait, White Christmas, Black Mirror, or yeah, OG, Black Mirror, Black Bing, Mirror. Bing Crosby, White Black Christmas, Mirror, Black whatever, Mirror. Fred Astaire, or whatever. Black Mirror. Uh, well, that's it. That'll do it for this we bizarre. We did it. We did it. We made it. We made it. 2021, uh, hearing, all the picks, hearing all the picks made me realize how much I've missed and how it was a shitty year to miss because... All of my favorite directors made movies this year. Yeah. Weirdly. I feel like it's a weird... like yeah, Everyone. Previous years, there was like something that I was like, oh my God, this is like... Like, there's always one that I'm like, this is a really, truly good film. Mm-hmm. I guess there are a couple this year. Whatever. I don't know. It's been a long day. Um, but speaking of patreon.com slash easy allies, we have our highest tier is our shout out tier. Um, if you want to join that, please do. It helps us out a lot. Um, when we will shout out to the following L. Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Caleb Togi Crawford, and Nick. Shout, shout out. out. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Huber. Thank you, everyone on the film club tier and above on our Patreon for submitting your wonderful comments. I really enjoyed reading them. When are you going to watch Cobra Kai? Probably not. When? Probably never. Why? Because I'm just not interested. No? I don't know. All right. I don't... Fair I'm enough. Hey, fair enough. Sophia can there's sum it up so, to me. There's only so many minutes you have to live. I'll watch the fall. I'll watch the rest of the fall. So <laughs> heavy. God. <laughs> Too much. Okay, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye.